Welcome back. We're here with Brett Burns, who is a high school teacher in Owsley County, Owsley County High School. And we know 3D printing is just a, a new tool, well, relatively new tool. It's taken and, off. Hasn't and it? you have a project involved in 3D printing. So, how did you come up with that idea and what are you doing? Well, I, like I said, I teach career and technical education, and through the Carl D. Perkins grant and, and funding program, we received an actual 3D printer in our classroom. And it was great. We were 3D printing all kinds of stuff, and, and it was really good learning opportunity. It worked well with our new pathway in school. But what I wanted to do was develop a project that took it a little bit farther. And instead of students creating things, being able to modify pieces of existing technology that they could then use themselves. So we, what we done was we wrote the grant application for a 3D scanner, which okay. would take already real world objects that already existed and then they could scan them and produce a 3D model and then modify that model to better okay. suit their needs or to overcome obstacles or, mm -hmm. or disabilities or things of that nature. And then we also took it a step farther with updating our precision measurement tools. We now have digital calipers, we have all of our metric standards and all those things that we need for that classroom project. And uh, the students are really taking hold of it. We're really getting that math seat in our elective courses now. We're, where they're actually engineering and designing. So it's been a really good program so far. We're continuing to grow. So. Well, I, we had uh, Katrina, Dr. Katrina Sloan in our office. Mm -hmm. She had a, a 3D printer in there and was mm -hmm. showing us some things. And, and she actually made a, a, an earring. Mm -hmm. And it was so neat. Uh, was you in there wrong when she did yep. that? I thought you were. And she uh, gave me one of the earrings. So I had never seen that in action. It's really but interesting. But it gets really, really, and I know Ron said this about the material, it got really, really hot. Yeah, yeah. It does, does it? Does. It melts. Our machine is sealed in, of course, with plexiglass safety windows. Yeah, that's uh, we use PLA. It melts somewhere around 900, I think, somewhere in there. Uh, when we actually melt our layers, what we started with was existing models that the kids could make. We make keychains and things yeah. like that. Uh -huh. But then when we really got all of our tools in place, we started making mechanical things. I have a mechanical background uh, as far as drafting and 3D design. I, I have a background in mechanics. And we made hinges that actually worked, that had clearance, latches that actually had clearance. Um, all of our students made interchangeable parts for an existing system and they had to have all that tolerance. We print at nine hundredths of a millimeter. So we can actually print layers so tight that you can't see them. You can't you can barely feel them but you can't see them. And that allows us to make really precision parts. And what we've done with this project is come back and be able to measure at that level to, to actually draft and design our models. What are some practical skills then that your students are getting and how this might prepare them for some interesting jobs down the line? Well, some of the things that my students have learned in the classroom is they've really learned a lot about precision measurement and tolerances. So maybe in the, the field of mass production or manufacturing, they may be designing real world parts like we designed gear ratios for uh, mousetrap cars. It's a little project we do. And that gear ratio then translates to the revolutions per minute of that rear wheel. We've designed bridges, we've designed uh, like I said, we've designed a lot of technical pieces, modifications of tools, and, and that's something that we find more and more in industries. We have people coming back from our conflict overseas and things like that. We need to overcome those physical disabilities and the needs that they have by modifying tools, and that's really helped us quite a bit. What do you see looking at Eastern Kentucky and where we're reinventing our economy, mm -hmm. and a lot of times you can work from home do some interesting stuff through the broadband, the internet. Mm -hmm. Of course, Alsley County has fiber to the home. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a gigabit community. Mm -hmm. So what are some things that the students are doing here that can contribute to new jobs and the new economy? One of the really interesting things about, like you said, our, our fiber to the home system and our students' ability to have connectivity yeah. through you know, home computers, their mobile devices, our public library offers a really yeah. nice lab for them as well, is they really have exposure to the workforce early on. We can actually have real-time contact with people in the manufacturing field or businesses oh. actually looking for work. And we, we've been communicating with the Teleworks community to maybe get a system in as well doing Teleworks from home. My, my fiance actually works in Owsley County. She graduated school here locally. 
and she works for Toys R Us. They're they're corporate. Oh. She she's a corporate member of Toys R Us. Oh. She's upper level management. She works from home every day, answering emails for for corporate and Toys R Us. So okay. it's really exposed the isolated communities in Appalachia, like Owsley County, to the world at large, because we can now telecommute without actually having to travel outside of the communities. And as we know, with 3D printers can be expensive, and yes, the supplies sir. can be, mm -hmm. uh, and you can have some challenges where they can break down. So yes, sir. it seems like the option of people then able to create that idea somewhere else and shoot it to your lab, yeah. or your students to another lab somewhere. So. Uh, Theoretically, every school would not have to have a 3D printer. Exactly. It's, it's, exactly. It's One of the things that we had to overcome early on is we had a major breakdown, and it was it was my fault. We were experimenting in the lab, yeah. and we, <laughs> we broke a piece on our printer. It was a latch that held the safety door shut, uh -huh. and we actually pulled our other one off, scanned it in our 3D scanner, and printed another latch. So our our printer now has oh 3D printed God. safety latches on it that are they're exactly like the one that was on it to start with. That is amazing. So that we is. actually have the plans as well and a model to actually build a 3D printer and we have to buy a couple of servos and things and we 3D print those parts to build that 3D printer. And there's very few, you have to have a couple of computer parts and that's about it. Well, we only did small things at the office mm -hmm. with Katrina that day. She mm -hmm. made a little tiny robot because she was just trying to demonstrate yeah. what all it could yeah. do. But Sounds like you're far and above well, doing all that. Like I said, I have a mechanical background. I really don't have an artistic background. So we started making mechanical things early <laughs> on because I knew how to teach them how to do that. Yeah. So we, we do a lot of mechanical things, but we have had the opportunity to make our uh, keychains for basketball season type things, oh, things like that. Uh -huh. Maybe uh, this Saturday is prom. We may make a couple of things to give away at prom and things like That's that. Nice. So. We're we're working on it, and we're we're expanding in in all areas. So, okay. well, Brett, I want to thank you so much for thank being you. on, and and congratulations on your great work in the classrooms. Thank you.